Hello, everybody. It's Matthew here from our Early On Center. And today, I would love to share with you this fantastic story. It's called Stolen Words. It's written by Melanie Florence. And it's illustrated by Gabrielle Grimaud. Now, this word, this book here, actually has some words that are in Cree, which is an indigenous, lang indigenous language. Now, this story actually has some words in here that are from the language Cree, which is an indigenous language. Now, Matthew doesn't know Cree, uh, so he's going to try really hard to say the words right. The wonderful thing about this book too is actually in the very back of the book, See, it gives us English translations and pronunciation of the Cree words found in the story. So there's going to be times when maybe Matthew's going to be reading the story and he's going to have to flip to the back just to make sure that he's trying to say them as best as possible. It's a very lovely story, so I would love to share it with all of you today. So, stolen words. She came home from school today, skipping and dancing, humming a song under her breath, clutching a dream catcher she had made from odds and ends, bits of string, plastic beads, and brightly colored feathers. Her glossy braids danced against her shoulders, swaying with her black as a raven's wing. Grandpa, she asked, clutching his hand, spinning under his arm before dropping it again. How do you say grandfather in Cree? He stopped breathing for a moment. A lifetime to a seven-year-old. He looked down at her sadly. I, I don't remember, he answered. I lost my words a long time ago. A frown crowded his face. How do you lose words, Grandpa? She asked. They took them away, he answered. She thought for a moment. Where did they take them, she asked. Where they took all of us, he said, away from home, away from laughter and soft words, away from our mothers who cried for us. She reached for his gnarled hand. Who took you away, Grandpa? She asked quietly. Men and women dressed in black, talking to us with words we did not know, he answered. They reached home and sat on the stairs together. Where did they take you, Grandpa? She asked. Away to a school that was cold and lonely, where angry white faces raised their voices and their hands when we used our words he answered. They took our words and locked them away, punished us until we forgot them, until we sounded like them. Harsh, sharp words, so different from the sound of our beautiful ones. She touched his withered face, tried to wipe the sadness away with her soft hands. Sorry. 
She looked down at her lap and handed him the dream catcher that she had made for her room. You take this, Grandpa, she said. Maybe it will help you find your words again. He smiled at her, his granddaughter, and touched her innocent face, a face that had never known hard words or raised hands. He smiled and kissed her head. The next day, she skipped out of school again, smiling widely at her grandfather. She stopped in front of him and took a deep breath. This is where I have to practice my reading, so one moment here. She says, Tansi ni musum. His eyes widened. Tansi, Tansi means hello, and Nimusum means grandfather. So she says, hello, grandfather. Tansi Nimusum. She smiled brighter than the sun. I found your words, grandpa, she said. She pulled a tattered, well-worn paperback out of her book bag. Introduction to Cree, it said. My teacher helped me find this for you at the library. He reached for it, his hands shaking, opened it, feeling the soft, much loved pages under his fingers. No, Sim, granddaughter, he whispered. The word felt familiar in his mouth. It felt like his home his mother. He turned the pages of the book carefully. Musi nu igen, book. Turn another page, word after word. Pikisquakwin, language. His words, pages and pages of them. He looked down at his granddaughter. No sim. And he said, thank you. Teamki, he said, teamki is thank you. Look at Will you read to me? She asked, taking his hand in hers and leading him home. Will you teach me your words? His heart danced as he nodded, holding the book against his chest. Thank you very much, my friends. That is the end. Again, this was Stolen Words. It's written by Melanie Florence and illustrated by Gabrielle Grimond. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to our story.